Welcome everyone. I'm Sherry Elam and I have a very special guest today, Blake Shook. I'm going to assume that most of you know who he is from his countless YouTube videos and countless webinars we're now over two years into, but I invited you, Blake, so that you could tell more about who you really are behind the camera <laughs> for the listeners. And I think that everybody's gonna be excited to hear. Welcome. Uh, oh, thanks, Sherry. I mean, it's great to uh, be on a Zoom call that's recorded and we get to share with people. I mean, we, we talk all the time uh, for work uh, and it's, it's great to dive into fun stuff and we get to talk about beekeeping and life and I'm excited and uh, and I'm, I'm curious to see where, where you take this interview. So <laughs> I'm a little nervous. So, <laughs> tell us, um, so tell us about how you got here. Yeah, there's a you know, story behind you. Yeah. I mean, you know, first of all, I, I never, I never thought I'd be here. I mean, yeah, I never planned to be here. I never had a grand plan to be a commercial beekeeper or involved with the bee supply company or packing honey or all the other things that Desert Creek has evolved into and Texas Bee Supply or the Bee Supply, formerly Texas Bee Supply has, has evolved into. Um, right. And, but here we are. I mean, I, I started beekeeping because I love bees. I mean, well, I shouldn't say that actually, that's not true. <laughs> I started beekeeping because I liked free stuff. And uh, ah. when I was 12, um, I, uh, I was convinced I was going to be a chicken farmer. I, yeah, when I was about eight years old, I started raising chickens and I loved raising chickens. I, I don't know why, just did. I grew up out in the country and I loved outdoors. I loved agriculture. And, and so started raising chickens, had a you know incubator that held 500 eggs or something and was hatching chicks and selling them. I think I would sell them for, they were 50 cents per chick or something at the time, a dollar for a dozen eggs. And, uh, and I, I, you know, Bo Pilgrim, was my hero. I don't know if Pilgrim's Pride chickens are even still a thing, but uh, I, so. <laughs> I was going to I was going to convince my parents I was going to put a chicken farm in their backyard, and oh my word. and I think I think they believed me and and, uh, <laughs> and said, "Wow, we've got to get this kid onto anything else other than other than chicken <laughs> farming." And so they signed me up for a youth program through the Collin County Hobby Beekeepers Association, so our, our local bee club. And, and they signed me up for it when I was 12 and, and I won and I, I never won any, ever, you know, I've never won anything in my life for free. And so I was like, okay, I, I'm not really that interested in beekeeping. I, that's kind of weird, you know, bee sting and everything. And, uh, <laughs> but you know, I, I, I it was free. And, and I, I remember uh, going to the banquet where I was awarded this scholarship and, and the guy sitting next to me and saying, Hey, you know, are you excited about beekeeping? And I was like, yeah, not really. I'm a chicken farmer. You know? <laughs> and, and, uh, and anyway, so um, went through the first couple of classes, uh, you know, classes came along with this youth program and just totally fell in love with beekeeping. And, and just, you know, like the second class in, I was on the edge of my seat um, passionate about beekeeping and uh you know about a year after that chickens kind of went by the wayside and, and I was kind of all in on beekeeping and really just built the built the beekeeping business through high school you know with started with a couple hives and you know I think the second year I caught something like 50 swarms and uh wow. you know I think like 10 of them stayed and uh <laughs> and and split hives and bought hives and started selling honey through high school so really through high school I was a hobby and sideline beekeeper and then uh, became went to commercial beekeeping right outside of high school, and 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 we can I'm sure we'll be getting into everything else that's happened since then. But that, right. that's kind of how how I got started, really. Well, I, I'm sure your parents went on the chicken thing. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what was worse, having a chicken farm in the backyard or tons of stinging <laughs> bees in the backyard. I, I don't know. <laughs> well, having done both, the profitability is definitely better on where you land. Big it. difference. Yes. Big difference. I'm, th I'm, so. I'm thankful we went to be keeping route in the long run. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And chickens are just, uh, they smell. <laughs> they do. They, they smell. Agree, they yeah. smell. Yeah. Well, um, I, and Desert Creek honey is what came out of that venture right out right. of high school. Right. And you are a very large scale commercial beekeeper in that venture. Um, how many hives does Desert Creek run? And I, when I say run, 
because I know you own and you run. That's a separate mm -hmm. number for commercial beekeepers, but whatever mm -hmm. figure you want to throw at us, we're very, very interested mm -hmm. to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it varies a lot, right? I mean, you know, commercial beekeepers can give their wintertime low number and it's dramatically different than their springtime high number. So, you know, in, in, uh, you know, in the in the the, the springtime, you know, if, if I'm going to give my high number, you know, it can yeah, sure. be. Uh, and, and keep in mind, we 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 build and sell a lot of beehives too. So we Desert Creek supplies the bee supply company with all the bees that they sell. So we're we're sister companies, and and so we're the the kind of the commercial or the the, the bee raising arm that raises all those bees and then we sell a lot of bees to other commercial beekeepers and then we have our own commercial operation that produces honey all over the country so if you kind of lump all that together i mean springtime high can can be as high as 25 plus thousand high um uh, in, in the springtime and then uh you know winter time that can drop down to you know uh, 8,000 ish you know in in the winter time high depending on how many gold earth is kept and how many we've lost, you know, loss rates are high, even, mm -hmm. even for those of us that theoretically know what we're doing, know what we're doing. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's still, you know, it's still not uncommon to have a 30 to 50 plus percent loss rate. So those mm -hmm. numbers can fluctuate a lot. Well, there's a lot of sources happening to all of us, regardless of the scale, yours probably translates into a much larger figure because you have that much many more hives we all don't like to have losses but uh, being lower in the winter makes it more easily handing handle you can yeah. handle it easier in the winter with mm -hmm. your storing them in sheds which I know you do the overwintering in right. sheds right. so um, yeah. It just makes sense. It's it's an up and down, just like a bee population, yeah. right? And 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 we we coal really hard, and so you know we're not going to go over winter with a six frame hive, you know, six frames of bees. Right. I mean, they've got to be for for us typically commercially, you know, they've got to be eight frames of bees or more, you know, for us to let them survive through the winter. Uh, but you know, and, and and I always have to play both sides, right? Because I do a lot of educating for small scale beekeepers. And I'm fortunate in that, or unfortunate, depending on who you talk to, but I don't come from a beekeeping family. You know, my roots started in hobby beekeeping and sideline beekeeping, and eventually I became a commercial beekeeper. But I know exactly what it's like to have two hives in the backyard. I know what it's like to have 20 hives, 30 hives, 40 hives. And, and that, you know, I spent 10 years almost in, in that stage of a small scale to sideline beekeeper. Um, but I also understand the commercial side. And so you know, we talk about losses and what we let over winter and not, you know, I, I talk about, you know, if you've got a six frame hive, you can't overwinter it on a small scale and, and you should. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, you don't need to go to almond pollination with it. You know, you, you, you're just doing it in your backyard. You know, you can keep smaller hives successfully. And so, um, so I try to play both sides and, and teach from, from whatever, teach from the aspect uh, of whatever, whoever my audience is. Um, instead of just staying on one side of the fence. Well, it makes sense because, I mean, we we aren't where you are and most of us won't be. Um, don't inspire to be and I'm very glad you're the one doing it because we, we do appreciate the value of our food sources because of it. But um, so talking about teaching and, and where you where you are with that, you and I've done a lot of, a lot of that together and, and separately. Right. But when you, so as you're out there and you're doing a video or you're you're talking about it, I do feel like you are teaching to me. You're teaching to that small scale or or you know midline intermediate beekeeper. So you really just do put on that hat, don't you? You you feel like you are you kind of just revert to that and and that's where you are. Yeah, and and it's not as hard as some people might think. I mean, I think usually people think there's a huge distinction between hive management on a hobby level versus hive management with thirty thousand hives. And what I found is there's really not. There are differences, but so much of management is the same. Um, and and that's what I always try to bring people back to is, you know, it's easy for people to discount commercial beekeepers, or it's easy for people to discount hobby beekeepers and say, oh, they don't neither side know how to talk to the other side and 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 i found that 
boy, 80 to 90% of what we do is applicable, no matter if you have one or 50,000. And there is a 10% difference. Um, but, but it's, it's easy for me to talk about, you know, not having to put on totally different hats because it's so similar most of the time. Well, it's a scaling. It's just scaling. I'm, I've got to work 50 hives or 500 you know, hives today. Yeah. And that's such a good point. The biggest differences are logistics differences, yeah. you know, is, is logistics, not management. Yeah, that's right. And that's good for everybody. That's a good takeaway from this is that management skills um, are developed and, and, and we all have heard of that aha moment. And um, I, ours probably came about I don't know. I think we had three or four. <laughs> we thought we were there and then we fell off. <laughs> we thought we were there and we fell off, but probably two or three years. And then you just have it and you don't think about it. Um, and then you just scale to fit that. Sure. You just absolutely. keep bees and everything makes sense. And right. if they could all, if every beekeeper could just hold on till that moment yeah. and, and yep. go, oh, it's just keeping bees and it's great. It's just, it's just keeping bees. So, um, so do you practice what you preach in beekeeping? Usually, yes. Yeah, I mean, you know, because oftentimes what I'm teaching is is the same stuff I'm doing as a business, mm -hmm. or or with the five hives that we keep at the office that I get to play around with. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it's it's very very similar. Um, and 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 I'm fortunate, and these days I have an awesome group of beekeepers that work for me and with me and and they're doing a lot of the management um on our commercial side and um but yeah i mean what i teach you know is is what we're typically doing and and i do videos out in our commercial bee yard oftentimes in the spring you know showing what what we're doing out there and it's surprisingly similar you know it, to, to what i'm teaching on a small scale well, um, I, and I'm glad you have help. I don't think anyone watching could think for a second you could do all of those hives. No, I get um, to be the face, but yeah. Isn't that great? A ton, of, ton of great help. Yes, you do. And um, I, I, how blessed you are to do that. Um, but you do have the bees you get to play in. So you talked about losses earlier. You know, that's an all year thing for most beekeepers. And you know, so often we're watching social media posts and, and thinking we feel so bad for those that have lost if they only start off with one or two hives. Um, when it comes to losses, obviously you can, you don't want to have losses, but when you see small scale beekeepers, what is your best advice how to recover from those losses? Is it more education maybe? Purchase more bees, start off with more bees, do a better job, pay more attention, spend more time in your bees. I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but just to kind of, what would you give a, yeah. another beekeeper advice about that loss that we're going to all have all the time? Absolutely. You know, when we think of losses, and it, it, I, I think the first thing to keep in mind is that assume you're going to have significant losses your first couple of years, possibly even 100%. You know that that's that's normal, and and I talk about all the time. Your real your real value is in that woodenware, in that comb, because that is really what's going to jumpstart you and put you ahead the next year. So as far as recovering from them, there or uh, diagnosing why you lost your bees is really helpful. So looking back and go, did I did I not handle mites appropriately? Did I not feed? Did I overfeed? You know, trying to understand what happened. But the best advice I can give is sticking with it, you know, do it again next year, you know, even if it's discouraging, understand that everybody loses bees, you know, and it's kind of like gardening. I mean, the first time you try gardening, like everything dies and nothing produces, you know, and, <laughs> and then you learn expensive vegetables you've ever had. Oh, my goodness. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I'll never recoup from the gardens that we've raised. I mean, uh, I could have, yeah, I totally could have bought it cheaper in a grocery store. Right. <laughs> um, but then you learn how to amend the soil. And then you learn how to fertilize properly and then not overwater, but water enough. And, and, you know, three or four years in, like you mentioned earlier, you can raise a pretty good garden and bees are just the exact same way. And so the best advice I could really give is stick with it and, and keep learning every year experience, you know, and education can help with that. You know, I mean, I'll certainly plug our magazine and our webinars and all the free education we offer will help you. Um, but experience is the greatest teacher. And, and so, yes, educate yourself. That's very important. Um, talk to other people that, that 
uh, have gone through it before you, uh, but but stick with it, and 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 that's going to be the greatest teacher. That's super super advice, truly truly super advice. Um, so if you were to think back on the most significant impact in your journey, um, good or bad, can you just off the top of your head think of it may have been even a person the most significant thing that made you either go, I can do this or oh, <laughs> what sticks out most in your mind? I mean, that is easy and it's people. And, and you uh, know, there, I would like to say it's a specific person. There's 20 people I love to name off their names that, that yeah. you know, if it wasn't for that person, I wouldn't be here. And I, and that would be true, uh, but, it, but it's the community, it's the people you know, it's B clubs, it's social media groups, it's, it's, you know, friends, it's mentors. And when you have those discouraging moments, those discouraging years, when you can't get past a problem, who do you pick up the phone and call or send an email to or, um, and, and so it would absolutely be the people, you know, past, present and future, uh, you know, the, 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 the partners I have now, the employees I have, you know, they, they all keep me going. And, and, and I think, um, along with that would be experience and time, you know, and, and sticking with it and, and learning from your mistakes. And when your beehives die, try and get in the next year. And, uh, you know, I, I, I get, I get the, oh, you're so young comment less and less <laughs> these days. Um, <laughs> that means you're getting older. Blake. <laughs> I, I, I am. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, but, you know, I've been doing this for 20 years now, you know, and, and so it's not been fast, you know, I mean, it's been, you know, I've been working at this as singularly focused for 20 years now, and, and it's taken that long to, um, to get where I am today. And, and, and I, I hope I'm far beyond where I am today, 20 years from now, but it's a journey yeah, and it takes time it's a journey. And, 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 and sticking with it works. You just got to stick with it. So I'm, I'm too stubborn or too dumb after 20 years, not to move on <laughs> to something else. Uh, but, but either way, it's, it seems to be working. I can, I, I can relate to that. <laughs> but I think you love what you do, and, and as I do, and so many people watching this video, that we love what we do. And beekeeping is fun. It's, it is family-oriented. It is community-based. It is such a uh, camaraderie that we can just all feel so safe in it. Um, right. Speaking of family, I want to, before we sign off and, and we're getting close, the bee supply is a family. And I want uh, you to, to tell everyone that you're not just, a, it's not just a corporation here, back here somewhere that doesn't know you, doesn't know the, the trade, the industry, but you're family. And it's the family yeah. that's behind DB Supply. Yeah, I mean, TBS is, uh, you know, I, I every now and then I see someone make a comment or uh, on a Facebook post or, or something that like, you know, that, that alludes to TBS being like this big company. And, and, and I guess compared to somebody selling B Supplies out of their garage, I guess we are. But I always <laughs> just, I always just laugh a little bit and go, Boy, if they only knew what we're really like, uh, like <laughs> you wouldn't believe what's going on behind the scenes. Um, and uh, and yeah, it, it, to me, it feels like a small a small company, and it's me and it's my parents and uh, that are the owners, and and we have an incredible small but talented and dedicated group of staff members around us uh, that that make it up the V supply, and. Uh, and, and I think we're really different because we're heavily involved in the industry. You know, there's a face behind this company and it's me and my parents and our staff and, and we're, we invest in the industry and we teach and we educate and we get down in the mud of, you know, of, of teaching. And, and, uh, and, and so, yeah, we're, we're a very small family based company. And, and I don't think that'll ever change, you know, even as we really, as we try to really grow and we are trying to grow you know, education, localized, practical education, um, keeping that family customer service uh, top of mind. I mean, those are huge priorities for us. And, and honestly, I, I get reminded all the time, I forget to sell anything. <laughs> um, you know, I'm, I'm terrible at like pitching product and, and like, oh, you should buy this thing. I hate doing that. And I just want to teach people about beekeeping. And, uh, 
and and that's really top of mind and 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 i say all the time because it's true is that we get to teach beekeeping and educate and be involved in the community and uh and selling stuff makes that possible and 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 that's kind of the focus for us is we got to sell some stuff to pay for all the stuff we do um but education and, and being involved in the industry is really where the passion is and 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 yeah everything else just supports that i um and as a team member i can concur um you you're a wonderful company to work for and to be a part of and i could not have said any of that better and i think that's where we ought to just call it a good good welcome to uh seeing in the blake ship world um thanks so much for being my this guest this time yeah, my pleasure and i um um we're going to visit again maybe that maybe a great. little get, get a few few more uh, growth things behind us. We'll visit again. How's that? I look forward to it. Sounds great. Perfect. So good to have you, Blake. We'll talk soon. Thank you. Thanks, Sherry. See you later.